Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to do a quick tutorial about setting up GitHub Actions on a repository. Uh, GitHub Actions is a continuous integration system. Basically, you can think about it as a way to run your tests. Uh, we're going to be using a Python repository. Um, uh, let's jump into that. Okay, so the repository that I'm going to be using today is one of mine called Add Trailing Comma. Uh, it is actually already set up for continuous integration using Azure Pipelines, but somebody asked for a tutorial for GitHub Actions, so I figured I would take this time to show you how I would set that up. Um, but yeah, you can see like I'm already already running against Azure Pipelines, so I don't really need to use GitHub Actions here, but I'll show you how that will get set up. And so I've already cloned this repository here, so we've got Add Trailing Comma. And we're going to add two different types of jobs in this case. So one of them is going to check the linting of the repository. And that keys off this uh, pre-commit config.yaml, which has a bunch of linters and code formatters listed in it. And basically, the job is just going to run uh, this pre-commit run dash dash all files command, which you know installs all of the tools that it needs and will hopefully tell me that my linting is good and all these things are passing. Because uh, this is one of the things that I want to continually make sure is still working in my project. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to run the test suite for this project. And this repository is set up using talks. I'll probably do another video about talks, but the like TLDR about it is it lists like Python versions that you target and some commands to run. You can kind of think of it as like a Python specific make, I guess. I don't know. That's how I kind of think about it. It knows how to make virtual ems and it knows how to run stuff. Um, but we're gonna we're gonna set up talks in a GitHub action. All right, so let's start by checking out a new branch. Dash b GitHub actions. Sure, that sounds good. And we'll work on this tab so you guys can see more of the code. Uh, so the first thing that we need to do is make a directory where we'll put those GitHub actions, and those conventionally go in .github slash workflows. Actually, I think this is the only uh, the only directory that GitHub Actions supports, <clears throat> so we'll drop our workflows in there. Now for the first one, uh, let's just do the pre-commit one. That one's going to be way easier because we're just, we're literally going to be able to copy and paste. Uh, because I've made a GitHub Action for a pre-commit that makes it super easy to just copy and paste and go. And here's the example, uh, the example GitHub Action for that. Uh, basically what it does is it makes a job named pre-commit. It will only run on pull requests and pushes to the master branch. So uh, if you had a different default branch, you would change this here. This is shorthand in YAML for pull request colon null because YAML. <laughs> uh, and it defines a set of jobs. In this case, there is only one job that matches this name. It seems a little bit redundant, but I don't, I'm not super familiar with GitHub Actions, so. Uh, and in this case, we're saying we only want to run this on Ubuntu, and it has a set of steps. So Actions is composed of, of a bunch of short, well, they're not always short, uh, a bunch of like different puzzle pieces that you can put together. In this case, we're cloning the code, we're installing Python, uh, we're doing some tricky cache stuff. This is so that the pre-commit action is fast if you run it a bunch of times in a row. And then finally, we're running the pre-commit action. But for this one, we can literally just copy and paste this and add a precommit.yml file in our workflows, .github slash workflows slash precommit.yml. And we can just paste this in here. And actually, I'm gonna start pushing this to origins and, and opening a pull request so we can see this running in action. Get, add GitHub, add GitHub action for precommit. And so when we push this, this will put the branch on origin and I'm gonna open a pull request. I'm not actually gonna merge this pull request because I, I don't, myself, I don't use GitHub Actions all that much uh, yet. There's there's one feature that's missing uh, and that's template repositories that would get me to switch. But anyway, this is you know basically just the copy and paste code. Uh, if we click create pull request, we should see it start running those. It'll also run my other CI. Come on, you can do it, I believe. Get I'm having trouble today? Oh no, there we go. See, pre-commit slash pre-commit pull request. Why is it pre-commit slash pre-commit? Oh, I guess it's the the file name and then the, the job name. Makes sense. Like, I'm not working on pre-commit. This is a different repository. Uh, but you can see that there's a CI runner that is basically installing Python and doing all of the things. 
And you'll see down here, this is the, the output from pre-commit. But anyway, we'll let that run. Uh, I'm gonna give you a quick demo of what Tox does and how we're going to use it to run tests in PI. Uh, but the basics behind Tox is you run the Tox executable. If you just run it by itself, it will run all of these environments in this env list. So it'll run 3.6 and then 3.7 and 3.8, then pipe by 3, and then this pre-commit environment. We don't actually need this pre-commit environment because we're linting pre-commit separately. Uh, or we're running pre-commit separately, but it's there in case you wanted to use it locally through Tox. So if we run Tox-E, this will pick a particular environment to run. So if we want to just run the Python 3.7 environment, we can do it like this. And that will install all of my dependencies and then run my test suite. You can see here that my test suite is pretty fast. We ran 116 tests. We skipped where we expected one of them to fail, whatever. But that's, that's the basics of Tox. Uh, we're going to abuse slash use a cool little trick with Tox. Uh, if you run Tox-epy, this will cause Tox to use the default Python uh, that Tox is installed to. So if Tox is installed to Python 3.8, it'll run a Python 3.8 environment. If Tox is installed to Python 2 environment, it'll run a Python 2 environment. Uh, but you can see here that we ran Python 3.8.2 because that's how I have Tox installed. But in this one, we're gonna write a workflow entirely from scratch. I'm actually gonna, well, <laughs> I say entirely from scratch, but we're gonna copy paste this one and delete most of it. Uh, GitHub workflows, we'll call it main.yml. Uh, and we'll replace this out with main. We still want it to run on pull requests and pushes to master, but we're going to change this here. And we're actually going to use a matrix for this so that we can deduplicate some of the code here. And I have the docs open for that already. Uh, and this is kind of what the matrix looks like. Now, for whatever reason, their docs here are not always the easiest to follow. This is actually supposed to be indented, but they don't really tell you this. Uh, but we're gonna copy this and adjust it slightly. So it's supposed to go in here, if I remember correctly, and not actually flush to the left. Um, so we'll we'll do that. We're gonna test on two different operating systems here. We're gonna not we're gonna skip macOS because it's kind of slow. Uh, but we're gonna test against Windows latest and Ubuntu latest. And the matrix basically gives you a cross product of all of the uh, the possibilities that you want here. And instead of Node, we're gonna use Python, and we'll use 3.6, 3.7, 3.8 and PyPy3. Because those were the versions that I had in Tox.ini, we want to make sure that we match these here. Now, <laughs> unfortunately, these names don't quite match up with these names, so we have like a slight discrepancy there, but it's it's fine. And I usually like to put the matrix first, so that everything after that is a like clearly templated out of this. So. We've got our first step, which is going to say we're going to run on matrix.os. This is like a substitution parameter. This is how GitHub Actions like takes your matrix and folds it into the values. Actually, for being more correct here, these should probably be quoted because otherwise they are floats in YAML. Um, and this will ensure that they're all strings here. This one is unambiguously a string, so it stays a string. Okay, but we still want to run checkout as before. There's actually a checkout v2, which is faster now. Uh, I believe there's also a setup Python v2. The pre one, due to technical reasons, currently requires v1, but um, that's fine. Now, if we don't pass any arguments to set up Python, it's just gonna pick the latest version, but we don't want that. We want a very specific version of Python. So if we look at the docs for uh, set up Python, set up Python GitHub, GitNub. <laughs> uh, you'll see that we can use this with to select the Python version that we'll use. So you can see we're set up Python with matrix dot, well, we didn't use Python version. Actually, we can probably do that here with Python version. So this will install Python. Uh, the next thing that we need to do is install talks because that's what we're going to use to run stuff. And we'll adjust this and you can do pip install dash dash upgrade uh, I usually like to install both Tox and virtualenv at the same time. Uh, I don't remember whether whether GitHub Actions ships with virtualenv or not by default, but this will make sure that we have at least a modern enough version. Um, this is sometimes important. Also, probably worth it to upgrade setup tools as well. And you know what? Why not? We'll upgrade pip as well. 
<laughs> just upgrade all the things. Uh, these ones should already be installed, so we're just making sure they're at the latest version. This may or may not be necessary, but uh, the important bit is to make sure that we install Tox here. And then we don't have this. And then the, the final thing we need to do is just run Tox. And we'll use that same trick that I showed before with Tox-epy, and this will cause it to pick the Python version that we've selected here. And this is just a very basic workflow for working with Python. Hopefully it works. I don't know, I didn't do any prep for this, so. Uh, <laughs> one take, surely, surely it'll work, right? And workflow for running talks. And before we push that to the origin, we'll see that, um, we'll see that our first pass here succeeded. Also Azure Pipelines ran, so that also succeeded. But now we uh, cross our fingers and hope that our other workflow worked out well. So check that. Let's watch that and see what happens. Um, yeah, one thing that I've noticed is that both GitHub Actions and Azure Pipelines sometimes take a little uh, a little while to start up. But it looks like it parsed our file fine, and so it's picked that we're going to run 3.6 on Windows latest. Uh, it's actually probably more versions that I needed to test, but <laughs> it's fine. It's a, it's a silly example. Uh, you can actually exclude and include stuff from your matrix as well. There's examples in the docs about this. I won't go. Let's just pick one of them, like 3.6 on Windows, and I don't know, PyPy3 is going to be a weird one. So we'll look at that one. And we'll see what happens here. Starting. This one is already set up. This installed what version of Python? This installed PyPy3. That's good. And when we ran talks, it's still installing. Oh, but you can see that it's using PyPy3, so that's good. Um, so this should run against PyPy3. I'll also just click around on the other one. This was 3.8. Huh? And did we run with 3.8? We did, and we got our test pass. Cool. So anyways, that's kind of the basics of this and, and how to get it set up there. Uh, I'll leave a link to this pull request in the... Um, oh, something failed. No! <laughs> uh, hmm... That seems a problem. Oh, I know why. <laughs> okay, so there's there's a slight little problem with the way I upgraded pip. Uh, main. So pip can't upgrade itself in place unless we use python -m pip uh, due to Windows and having open files and stuff. But anyway, this this will be the fix. Uh, but yeah, I'll leave a link to this this pull request in the description, but I'm, I'm going to close it and not actually merge it because I'm going to stick with Azure Pipelines for now. But anyway, hopefully this was helpful. And um, yeah, thanks for watching. If you have additional stuff you want to see or other questions, uh, leave a comment below or hit me up on the various platforms. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.